Hello friends, this video on soil part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have discussed about the various types of soil. So now is the time to talk about the properties of soil. Now soil is something which is so desperately needed by the plants for their survival. So what are the properties of soil because of which it, it becomes such a valuable resource. So let us we will so let us quickly look at the properties. So right now we will talk about three important properties of soil. First is percolation rate of water. That is, we will see that how fast or how slow water can drain through a particular type of soil. And we will see that these properties of soil are different for different types of soil. The next property would be moisture in soil, how much moisture is contained in the soil. And the third one is water absorption by the soil. So how much water the soil can absorb. So you see everything is related to water, right? Because for plants so if you look at soil from a plant's perspective it is soil is important to plants because of water because plants need water for their survival so get they get water from soil plants need nutrients minerals and they get it from the soil dissolved in water so water is something which is which is kind of a link between the plants and the soil so here all the three important properties of soil are related to water so let us start with percolation of water. Now before we talk about percolation of water, it is important to understand the meaning of the term percolation. So what is percolation? It is the name of, given to a process of a liquid slowly passing through a filter. Now have you ever seen a filter paper? How does it look like? It is a kind of a paper with tiny pores on it. Now whenever you pass a mixture through it, any solution which has both solid as well as liquid. So what happens, the solid particles are not allowed to pass through those tiny pores and therefore they are stuck there. Whereas the liquid passes through it. So that's how you can separate the two components using the filter paper. So the, any process in which a liquid is very slowly passing through a filter, that process is called percolation. Now when I say a filter, this filter is not necessarily a filter paper, it could be any porous material, that is any material with pores. Basically any material with tiny holes or tiny pores acts as a filter. Now one very common example and I would say the best example that I can give you to explain percolation is coffee making. Now have you ever seen how coffee is prepared? So coffee is actually prepared from the coffee grounds. So you would have seen the coffee, you know, the, the powder kind of a thing, the coffee beans, what do you call them as. So you see here we have a funnel and then on top of it is a filter paper and you see this coffee is present here. So the coffee grounds are present here. Now the grounds being so big that they will not be allowed through this filter paper to pass through it. Now when we pass water through it what happens is the soluble constituents from this coffee grounds so something that soluble part it gets dissolved in water and it gradually passes through the filter paper and what we get here is the coffee. So basically the soluble constituents of the coffee grounds give the color, taste and aroma to the coffee. So, so it gets separated here. So what is exactly happening here? So here we see that the liquid and what is that liquid here? Liquid is nothing but water mixed with the soluble components of the coffee grounds. So that liquid is gradually moving or gradually getting filtered through this filter. So this is kind of a filter which has been arranged here. So this is an example of percolation. Now this process is not happening at a very fast speed but yes it is continuously happening. So this is an example of percolation. So now we are going to talk about percolation of water through soil. So here we are considering soil as the filter paper where soil has a lot of pores. Now you remember when I while we were discussing about the soil profile I said that A horizon is very soft and porous. So A horizon has a lot of pores. So anything which has pores can act as a filter. Right? So due to this porous nature of soil what happens is water can slowly pass down through the soil. Now have you ever noticed that when you water the plants in your garden, so for that matter you consider the example of a plant which is, uh, which is on a pot because in that case 
you'll be able to understand how exactly the water gets percolated. Now, when you put water, let's say you have put sufficient amount of water inside this tumbler. Now, what happens? Now, as immediately when you put water, if you look at it, you'll be able to see water over the surface. So, you can see a layer of water above, right? But just wait for a couple of minutes. After some time, what do you see? That all the water went inside. We don't know where it went, but it just went inside. So what actually happened was, now this soil is made up of the soil particles. But there are spaces between the soil particles. So water tends to move through those spaces and it tends to go down. It, it goes deeper. And that is why after some time we do not see any water on the surface. So this process of water getting filtered through the spaces between the soil particles is known as percolation of water through the soil. Okay, so now that we have understood what is percolation, so the question is what is percolation rate of water? Rate is always speed of anything. Okay, so the amount of water that gets percolated per unit time. So how fast that percolation process is taking place? That is how fast water is actually moving down or water is actually getting filtered through the pores of the soil over a specific period of time. So let's take this example. So let us try to calculate the percolation rate of water. So let us suppose that you have taken say 100 milliliter of water in this tumbler. So you have actually measured the amount of water and you have taken it. And then you put this entire 100 milliliter of water in this flower pot. And then what happens? You just wait for some time, waiting for the entire water which is visible above to get inside. And what do you observe? You observe that the time taken by the water to get seeped down completely is around 10 minutes. So that is what you observed. So that means this can actually tell you how fast water is percolating. So how fast water is moving through the pores and the soil. So this measurement is done with the help of percolation rate. So how do we calculate percolation rate? Percolation rate is the amount of water in milliliter divided by the per time taken for percolation to take place that is divided by percolation time and this time is in minutes so therefore it is measured in milliliter per minutes so let us try to calculate the percolation rate of water in this particular example so it will be 100 milliliter divided by 10 minutes so this would be equal to 10 milliliters Per minute. So this would be the percolation of water through this specific soil. Right? So I hope you are getting it. So percolation is always the process of filtration of water. That is how water is passing through the pores present in the soil. Now how do we calculate it? Because we actually cannot see how exactly water is moving through different pores. But all we can see from above is initially water was there and now all the water just went down. That means the complete water has percolated. Now an important point to note here is that the rate of percolation depends on the soil composition. That is, what is the soil made up of? What are the type of particles which compose the soil? So, the type of particles which make the soil play an important role in deciding how fast water will percolate through that type of soil. So, that is why the percolation rate of water is different in different types of soil. So, if you compare how fast water drains through a sandy soil, it is going to be very different from that of loamy soil. And again, that is going to be different in that, that of clay soil. Let's see how exactly is it different from these three types of soil. So here with this picture, I have tried to explain that how fast water is moving down. So basically percolation means water is moving down, water is getting filtered through the pores of the soil. So how fast water is moving down. So that is your percolation rate and this percolation rate is maximum in case of sandy soil. Do you know why? Because sandy soil is made up of big particles. So therefore the spaces, so big particles, therefore spaces between the particles is also big. And through these big spaces, it is easier for water to drain through it. Therefore water drains very quickly through sandy soil. 
If you look at loamy soil here, the spaces is comparatively lesser than sandy soil. Therefore, your percolation rate will also be little less. You compare it with clay soil. Clay soil, what happens? They are like very many tiny particles all closely packed together. So there are very tiny inter tiny spaces in between them. So that is why the water cannot drain that quickly. So water gets locked there. Water gets the uh, the soil holds the water. It doesn't allow water to drain through it. So water cannot pass through it, but water gets retained by the soil. Right? So when we are talking about percolation rate, it is maximum in case of sandy soil and it is minimum in case of clayey soil. So please understand this because many a time students get confused. They think that okay, uh, which, which soil will have more percolation rate and which soil will have higher water retention. See these are two different things. When I talk about water retention, I am talking about water that is held by the soil. So if you talk about holding water, which soil is holding more water? So clay soil is holding more water because it is actually locking water in these tiny spaces in between. But when I talk about percolation, that is how fast water is draining through it. So in that case, I need big spaces in between so that water can flow down through them. So that in that case, the percolation rate is maximum in case of sandy soil. Now, why do we want to know about the percolation rate? That's because Knowing percolation rate will help us to decide which type of crops are suitable to be grown on which type of soil. So let us say sandy soil. We know that in sandy soil the percolation rate is very high. So which type of plants do you think will be suitable for sandy soils? Now those plants which might not require a lot of water being held by the sand, which needs dry soil, maybe for those type of plants, sandy soil might be helpful. So that means percolation rate helps us to decide how can we utilize that particular type of soil for a specific crop. Thank you. Please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.